Hello, welcome. I'm Pastor Frank Summerfield, pastor of Word of God Fellowship Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, also founder of Word of God Christian Academy, grades K-5 through grade 12, going into our 20th year. Thank you for joining us for this program. There are some very exciting and very rewarding things that are going to happen during this program, and I'm encouraging you to stay tuned for the entire program. You know, we're going to be showing you some things in a few seconds that have to do with why Word of God Fellowship can be a blessing to you and your children if you have a family. And if you're single, we got things for you. Married couples, we got a lot for you. And if you're in transition, we got a lot for you. So the, the, the spot you're going to see in a few moments is going to tell you why we think we can meet your needs at Word of God Fellowship Church. And also, later on, I'll be back to talk to you about a few other things. God bless you. Thanks for joining. You looking for more than just a traditional church service? Come be part of our global ministry with a family feel. We welcome you and your family to come join us at Word of God Fellowship, 3000 Rock Quarry Road. Grow your marriage bond through our strong marriage ministry. Enjoy lots of wholesome activities with our energetic Soaring Singles Ministry. We also have a thriving Senior Saints community just waiting for new people like you. And we have sign language interpreters for the hearing impaired. As a family-oriented church, we offer an excellent children's ministry known as our Kingdoms Crew, which serves our infants, adolescents, and teens. Here at Word of God Fellowship, we highlight the fine arts through our band, performance arts, and choir ministries for all ages. Expand your vision with annual national conferences that will lift you up to a higher level. Enjoy our live musical events and relax with like-minded people in a Christian environment. Join us in expressing our love through our health programs, food pantry, prison ministry, and other outreach programs. We look forward to seeing you with your hands lifted during our dynamic time of praise and worship beginning every Sunday morning at 1030, every Tuesday, and first and third Friday at 7 p.m. Word of God Fellowship, the place of worship for you. Let's talk about the supernatural power of change. Uh, do you know that some of your, your, your problems in life and some of your lack of progress are the result of you refusing to change things? Some of you are just one change away from your prosperity. Coaches. In some cases, you just need to change one play, one approach. It's amazing what one change can do. Somebody say one change. Change has within its definition adjustment uh, in terms of uh, synonymous words, uh, adjustments, newness, uh, renovation. Uh, you probably could think of some others, you know, just things being different than they were. And, and the supernatural power of change, the reason why I, I love that subject is because a lot of times our destiny eludes us because we just won't change. You know that some people won't change because they're stubborn. And they're literally stubborn, 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 born, stub, a stub. They don't want to grow. They just won't grow because they won't change. Some people uh, don't change because they won't admit they need to. They, they just, in other words, you know, refuse to be told that they need to do something different. And there's some things, there's some things that cause that kind of attitude. Pride or lack of humility. Won't let people accept responsibility to receive correction. I, I, I already know what I'm doing. Just, just so many, and, and so many of us miss out on so many things in life. So many things we could experience because we won't change. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, focus with me there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, or he's a new species, a new creation. Old things are passed away. They're gone. They no longer exist. They're eliminated from your life. 
Behold, all things are become new. Somebody say new. new. You know, I like the sound of new. New is, uh, it shows, a, a, it, to me, it has a refreshing sound to it. Amen. New uh, has, has a, uh, to me, uh, a sound of uh, renovation, a sound of uh, something that I can anticipate and expect something better than what I had. Amen. To me, new should indicate better because what says to getting something new if it's worse than what you had? So I, I see new as logically something that, that's going to be better than what I've already had, better than what I've been experiencing. Say amen. No, you need a new mind sometime. You need a new mind, new mind, new attitude. You can't get a new altitude without a new attitude. Say amen. Look at uh, Isaiah 43 and verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19 with me. And while you're turning, say the supernatural of change, power of change. Say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. You know, uh, hey, how many of y'all know you got to renew your mind every day? Yes. You got to renew your mind every day. Yes. If you don't renew your mind every day, your mind going to have clutter. It's going to yes. have clutter, old junk, old crazy thinking, yes. old failure thinking, Amen. poverty thinking, sickness thinking, anger, depression, anxiety, fear. All that kind of negative thinking is going to negate your activities and life. You got to get a new mind. You got to renew your mind. Amen. You got to get a, a, a different set of thinking, different thinking patterns. Yes. You got to see yourself different. You got to create, create a new image of yourself. Amen. The image you have of yourself has everything to do with how others perceive you. Amen. People will never perceive you anywhere beyond what you perceive you to be. The way you, your self-image has to do with your self-esteem, your self-worth, your self-identification, your self-value. Yeah. How do you see you? How do you value you? How important do you see you? Do you know that God values you as much as anybody can be valued? Yeah. So much he loved you and sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sins yeah. before you were ever born. Amen. That's a high value. Give God a hand clap. That's a high value. Yeah. God loves you. He cares about you. He knows your name, your circumstance, your condition, your present, and your future. Remember you're not the former things. Uh, Isaiah is giving us some advice here. Stop remembering that old bad, you know that bad relationship you used to be in? You know that bad marriage? Come on, somebody. Yeah, amen. That, that, that job you had that didn't work out right? On, that bad investment that you know, cost you your money? Yeah. You can't dwell on past stuff, man. Amen. You got to learn how to move yourself to a new mind every day. You got to renew this thing every day. This is your manufacturing plant for your life. As you think so are you got to control this thing. No wonder Paul talks about it a lot in uh, Romans 12 and 2 and uh, I believe Ephesians 4 chapter 4 verse 23 and 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 to 5. He talks about the mind a lot. But you got to stop thinking about the former things and don't even consider the old stuff. Don't even consider it. Don't even consider it. The old times, the old situations, old relationships that didn't work out. People that did you wrong, that hurt you, that lied on you, cheated on you, whatever they did. You got you to deliver yourself from your past. Nobody can deliver you from your past but you. You are your own victim of your own past if you won't stop thinking about the past. I think about how I used to, when I was a young boy, I grew up in, in, in the projects in different places where we were so poor that I told this story the other night, and, and I've told it many times before, so if you've heard it before, that's okay. Too bad, you're going to hear it again. Well, I had roaches all in the bed. When was, at night I'd sleep, I would wear one of my mother's old stockings, the old, you know, they, back then they, had, they didn't have pantyhose. They just had one leg, one leg, the leg stockings, and I would take her old stockings, and I would tie the top part, cut it off, tie the top, and just down to the point where the thigh part, put it over my head, cover my eyes and my ears and my mouth so the roaches wouldn't crawl inside my ears, nose, and mouth while I was asleep because there's so many of them in the bed. That's how we had so many roaches. That's how poor we were. But I can't dwell on how poor I was. Amen. My wife used to not have no bathroom. She grew up in no bathroom. So we got married. 19 years old, first bathroom she ever had. No running water. Water from the spring. But she, you know, outhouse. But she don't, we can't dwell on that. I can't dwell on what she didn't have when I met her. She can't dwell on what I didn't have when she met me. We, we got too, we got, we're too busy looking at the future. We're too busy going into our new time, our new mind. I, I, can't, I can't dwell on the fact that this sanctuary, you know, is a great sanctuary and the academy building down there is nice and the modular is okay. I ain't going to lie on them. They're okay, okay? 
and I can't, you know, get caught up in, you know, uh, thinking that that's it, and you know, just well, this is it. Well, well, no, no, we we got to move to the future. Yeah. We got to move to better things. Yeah. We, got, we got bigger fish to fry. Amen. Come on, somebody. So I, I got to keep my mind renewed every day. So I can't consider the things of old. I can't even think about what we did ten years ago. How many students graduated? I thank God for statistics, and I will tell it. But I'm looking at the, the university graduates. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, I want to. I want. I want to go further than where we are. I'm looking at the new buildings, the new facilities. Amen. I think I was told a few minutes ago that the 23rd or the 20, I think it's the 23rd of, of this month, this is what's been told us, that the, the field should be ready for the sod. Amen. You know, the grass, okay? Now, while you're clapping, clap for the $45,000 we need you to give. Yeah. Amen. I thought it was going to be 19. I got told the other day it's done went up to 45. So, hey, listen, we cannot, when we hear numbers and, and hear circumstances and face demons and whatnot, and obstacles, we can't bow down, yes. coward out, get inside the boat and curl up and say the storm's too much. We got to jump out of the boat, get on the water, walk to Jesus, come on, and take control of the circumstance. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Jeremiah 32, 17, 27 says he's the God of all flesh. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. If you get a new mind every day, you won't let old problems hold you back. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. It's not impossible to pay for the sod cash. Cash. I believe there's $45,000 that can be given sitting in this congregation right now and whoever's online. I believe there's enough folk that can give it, we could actually raise the $45,000 today. Now that's what I believe. I don't know what you believe. I'm telling you what I believe. Don't expect me to believe like you or, or disbelieve because you disbelieve. The reason why we are as far as we are is because we decided to believe. Okay, because this used to be a dirt pile with branches and rocks and stubs. We didn't even own the property. Then 127 acres later, because that's the total amount of land, plus 51 over here that we sold transactionally and made some money to build the 200 houses. And every street over there has a biblical name. Go over there and see. Because we had control over that. If we decided to not believe, none of that would happen. You got to believe, man. When, let me tell you, when hell and high water comes against your life, you got to believe God. You got to trust God no matter what. You got to know that God is your source. He's our source. And Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, every time I read it, it always says, Now unto him who is able, even when you're not able, he is able to do exceeding, exceeding, I'll say it again, exceeding abundantly, above, beyond all you could ever ask or think. By the power he is that works in you, there's a power of God working in me. supernatural power of change. If you are right now experiencing stuckness, stuckness, or the state of being stuck, no motion, no progress, no movement, no success, you need to go back to the drawing board and look at your processes. Let me say that again. Not trying to insult your intelligence, but I want to make sure everybody gets it because there's all kinds of levels of thinking here. If you are right now circumstantially in whatever you're doing, whether it be your marriage, your career, your athletic program, whatever, your academics, if you are experiencing a state of stuckness, meaning no progress, no expansion, no increase, no success, you really need to go back and revisit your processes. Because lack of progress and lack of success usually indicates you have been using the wrong processes and you need to change your processes. The same energy you have been wasting with wrong processes, wrong techniques, wrong tactics, that same energy can cause everything to turn around and change if you'll change your processes. You can't be stuck with the same process if it's not getting you anywhere. That redundant continuing to be or do the same thing the same way is kind of borderline insanity. That's a pretty abrupt statement, isn't it? But it's the truth. You, 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 you're looking at your life. You see where you are. 
and you see where you want to be. You see what you are, and you see what you want to be. Now listen to this. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to condense this because there's some, some serious principles that have to be adhered to. Now, in, in Romans, the 12th chapter, and verse 2, I believe it says, be transformed or changed. Transform comes from the original Greek word metamorpho, like metamorphosis, which is what a butterfly basically had to go through to become a butterfly. He was a caterpillar, a little furry-looking, little curly little thing crawling around all slow that people stepped on. But then when he went inside himself, wrapped himself up in himself, and realized that he was the answer to his own problems. The metamorphosis process, in my opinion, revelationally denotes that sometimes the basic problem we have in life is because we don't go within ourselves where the answer is anyway. Because if we're born again and we're full of the Spirit of God and Jesus is Lord of our life, he's the answer to everything. He's the way, the truth, and the life, John 14 and 6 says. So the way, truth, and life lives inside of you and the one that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us is inside of us. So if we turn within ourselves like the caterpillar turns within himself, wraps himself up in himself, and stays within himself and examines himself for a certain number of days. And eventually after he deals with himself, he begins to shed what he was and becomes what he is. And he's now a butterfly that flies. Doesn't crawl around on the ground anymore. Nobody can't step on him. He now flies above the same people that used to step on him. Or try to. The change that you need right now can be the propulsion or the takeoff to your whole new life. Elevation in your life, elevation in finances, elevation in romance in your marriage, elevation in career, elevation in your, your financial processing and accomplishments and portfolio. But sometimes because we're stuck in a rut, I call it a rut. How many of y'all know what a rut is? A rut is a condition of something you won't change that you have gotten used to, addicted to, and acclimated to so much you're comfortable in it. My mother used to call it wallowing. You know, when you wallow in a condition that's got you in a place of restraint and you don't stop being in that condition, you're wallowing in your failure, wallowing in your self-pity, wallowing in your self so low self-esteem, wallowing in your lack of confidence, wallowing in your fear, wallowing in your depression, your anxiety, your negativity, wallowing in it because you refuse to get up and change it and square your shoulders, put your stomach in, stick your chest out, hold your head up, throw it back and say, I will change. So many people never succeed in life because they won't change. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, Paul again writes to the church at Ephesus and says that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He tells the church in Rome in Romans 12 and 2, which I started quoting, he says, be, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. Go through a mental metamorphosis. By the renewing of your mind, as you might prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. So it looks as though for us to go through a metamorphosis and be renewed and transformed, there's got to be something that takes place in our mind. We can't skip over the mind needing to be where we change first in order to change our lives. Many of us are victims of wrong thinking. We think wrong. We think negative too much. We think defeat too much. We think failure too much. We think inferiority too much. And the more we think on these things, think on these ways, the more... I there are many reasons why people fail to, or in some cases, refuse to change. Change can only take place or be experienced after one's mind and thinking has been renewed. In order to know what God has for you, you must hear the word over and over again. This message, The Supernatural Power of Change, is now available on a five-part CD series for only $15.95 or a five-part DVD for $24.95. This offer is for a limited time only. So act now and call 919-834-1141 or go online to summerfieldministries.org and click on the Wisdom Restaurant. Please add $5 shipping and handling to all orders. God bless you. Thank you for joining the program. You know, we took a break because I got something I think is very, very valuable that I want to make available to you. You know, we, we were on the air to bring the Word of God to people, and all love seed offerings help. 
And in fact, you know, we're asking you to give a love seed offering so we can continue to bring the word of God to you and maze of others. But for your seed offering today, I want to make available to you a very special book, How to Turn Your Prison into Your Prosperity. Most of the time, the prison that you're experiencing is not bars, but it's your mind because you're thinking small, you're thinking negative, or you're thinking, you know, limited. And you can free yourself from the prisons of life with this book because we talk about how an inmate had a life cert sentence and miraculously the life sentence got canceled in, in one year. How to turn your prison into your prosperity can be a blessing to you. We want to gift you with this. And then also we're going to throw in another tremendous book that's endorsed by Bishop T.D. Jakes, The Supernatural Power of Your Vision. That's right. There's a vision in you. If you're a pastor, if you're a leader, a business owner, husband, wife, whatever, there's a vision in you that's supernatural, that's empowered by God that you need to find out about. Listen to what Bishop T.D. Jakes has to say and send your love seat offering of $30 in and we'll make both of these available to you to bless you. God bless you. Thanks. You know, you know what, there, there's so much word in this man. I mean, he's tremendously anointed and gifted with revelation. You, uh, you have a way of saying more by accident than a lot of people say on purpose. And, uh, <laughs> but, but they're the great gift. If I was anywhere near Raleigh, you need to check this church out. There are a lot of great churches up there, but this is certainly one of them. Amen. Word of God Fellowship in Raleigh, North Carolina, and now in Dudley, North Carolina also. And if, you, if you're not in North Carolina, you can at least get the book, The Supernatural Power of Your Vision. And I've already been skimming through it. Not only is it some good soul food, it looks like it's some good preaching stuff in there. I'm, and you don't mind if they preach yourself a little bit? No, I was trying right. to find that eagle stuff down in there. But uh, <laughs> The Supernatural Power of Your Vision, and you can get this in the bookstores? Uh, yes, sir. And also... Uh, um, SummerfieldMinistries.org, www.summerfieldministries.org is, uh, uh, you can get it there, 24-hour website and all that stuff. I, I'm uh, going to ask our technicians to be sure and put your information up on the screen again. Again, the supernatural power of your vision. The reason I keep going back to this is that I really sense that God has drawn to the television set tonight mm -hmm. people who have vision. And they don't necessarily see the provision yet, Amen. but you have the vision. And what Bishop Summerfield has spoken has ignited something in your heart that renewed your faith that God is going to do that thing that's invisible. It's going to become tangible Amen. in your life. Amen. You need this to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. The supernatural power of your vision, you need to get this and be blessed. Sometimes God has to get to you where you can't turn to anyone else but Him then you truly prosper. God and all of creation awaits our manifestation as the people of God who will turn their prison into prosperity. We want to share with you two books that are guaranteed to bless you. For a love seed offering of just $30 or more, we will send you both books, How to Turn Your Prison into Your Prosperity and The Supernatural Power of Your Vision. Call 919-834-1141 or go online to summerfieldministries.org and click the Wisdom Restaurant. Act now while supplies last. Please add $5 shipping and handling to all orders. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. I'm gonna show you how great I am. This kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. I'm gonna show you how great I am. And nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you gotta go through to get to where you wanna get, who's got the right to stop you? I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to someone, something. And you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut, and ain't nobody's right to say no. After you earn the right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. Now, if you know what you're worth, then you want to get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hit. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. 
beyond measure. I'm going to show you how great I am. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Summerfield, founder of Word of God Christian Academy, grades K-5 through grade 12. You know, I want to tell you a few things about Word of God Christian Academy. We're in our 20th year. We've had 20 graduating classes, and about 78% of our graduates have gotten either an academic or athletic scholarship. In fact, our athletic program has been tremendous. We've had state championships in girls basketball, boys basketball, and football. We've had the number one draft pick player, John Wall, 2010, by the Washington Wizards come from Word of God Christian Academy. C.J. Leslie with the New York Knicks from Word of God Christian Academy, and many other athletes that have done well and gone on and done great things. We have three Gates Millennium Scholars. That's correct, three Gates Millennium Scholars. We have an eighth grader, we had an eighth grader rather, that was the first North Carolinian to win the Nassau Space Research Award, one of our eighth graders that's sponsored by NC State. So great things are happening. In fact, there's a, a, we have statistics that have indicated to us that students that attend Word of God Christian Academy that have been in the public schools, after one year, their GPA goes up between one point to one and a half points in their GPA accumulation. In other words, if they were a, a 2.0, they end up being a, a 3.0 or a 3.5. That's the high side. At least one GPA point or one and a half. That's tremendous. You know, as a former educator myself, I've taught at elementary school, high school. I've also taught at two universities, Campbell University and Shard University. I understand the value of education and I understand how important it is to have the right environment. Here in a Christian environment, where smaller classes take place, more one-on-one, -on -one, special tutoring that we take, that we bring into the picture as well. I think we can turn things around for your student if you have had problems or have been having problems in the public schools. Not knocking the public schools, I've taught in the public schools, but sometimes you need a different environment. If you give Word of God Christian Academy a chance, I don't think you'll be disappointed. We've turned many children's lives around and we also look forward to turning your child or your children's lives around too. Give us a call. There's a number on the screen. We'd love to give you a tour and help you and your child be successful because we know that they can do great things. God bless you. Thanks for watching this program. Thank you, Covenant Partners, for all your support.